Hello YouTube, I'm Zach, you're watching Zach DTV, the place for interesting news from around the net. In today's episode, we are going to look at a better way to kill mosquitoes, then we have a light bulb that could turn any surface into a touch screen, and we're going to wrap up with a beer that's better for you. And remember, if you like news like this, five days a week, go ahead and click the subscribe button right over here, so you know when I upload something new. All right, let's get right into this. Researchers at the Seattle-based startup Intellectual Ventures Lab have created what they call a photonic fence. And this device is currently in testing in Florida right now as a way to stop mosquitoes and other types of flying pests. This device uses optics and other camera systems to target bugs based on shape, velocity, wing beat frequency and acceleration. Once the machine determines that that bug is a pest, it hits it with a laser and kills it within 25 milliseconds. This is pretty cool, right? I mean, that thing is just dropping these mosquitoes like it's nothing. As it is right now, it has a view radius of 100 meters and a kill zone of 30 meters around it and three meters high. And according to the producers, it can kill 20 insects Per second. That's a lot better than that old zapper on your grandmother's back porch, right? Now, they started this project back in 2007, and like I said, they finally got it to a, a real world testing phase. If everything goes well, it could prove its ability to target only mosquitoes. I think they're doing mosquitoes, gnats, and there was a third one. I, I just don't remember what it was. But as long as they could prove that it won't hurt beneficial insects like butterflies and bees, they're going to get the go-ahead to do this in outdoor testing. Right now, the market they're targeting is the orange growers and stuff like that, whose crops can just be decimated if infected with larvae from these bugs. It does seem like it's gonna be a bit on the high end, a little bit expensive. I mean, we are looking at laser guided mosquito killing, but hopefully they'll be able to get a price point down to where the average homeowner could buy this to defend their backyard, or it could be sent to areas that suffer from malaria, stuff like that, to really help control a pest population. Well, there you have it. Lasers can save your summer. For my next segment here, let's talk about something new that came out of the labs at Carnegie Mellon. This is their Future Interfaces group. I don't know if you remember, if you saw my episode where we covered spray paint that made stuff a touch surface. Well, this is a light bulb. Light bulb. That can make things a touch surface. According to Professor Chris Harrison, we believe the time has come to reimagine the light bulb as a 21st century computational appliance, illuminating our days not just with light, but information. The basis behind this is... You end up with a projector in the ceiling and multiple cameras to read the desktop. You screw this right into an existing light bulb. It fits your standard house light bulb socket. It then maps out your desk and can project different items onto it to allow it to be a touch screen that you manipulate with your hands. So basically, you know, put this in a light bulb socket above your desk, put it above your kitchen counter, wherever you want a touch surface, and it will work. The designers do say that will work on contoured surfaces, dimensional surfaces, but it's less fatiguing on you, the user, to have it on a flat surface. It does respond to all your pinch and pulls and stuff like that. It is a little bit slow. It needs to be sped up a bit, but it's proof of concept that they just debuted at Symposium on Engineering Interactive Computing Systems. And as you saw, the info bulb does do a good job at what it does. You saw it snap to an object. It can also move away from an object if you put something in its way. So it's a very smart device as well. And according to Harrison, they also want to add a regular visible light camera. So that way it can actually sort of read what's on your desk, read what's around it, and maybe pop up suggestions or add notations to your photos, stuff like that. Kind of a cool idea, but that also gets into that weird, uh, that weird gray area of computers doing a little bit too much for us, right? But as with anything I talk about, we're going to see where this one goes. Hopefully it goes into production. I think it would just be cool to have these hanging in a couple different spots, like over my workbench, over my desk that I use to do these videos, and just give me that extra dimension of capability wherever I'm working. What do you guys think about this? Is it a good idea, or do you think this is the next step to a Big Brother watching us? Let me know in the comments down below. And for my final story, for all you beer drinkers out there who've been told it's not healthy, well, here's a chance to make it healthy. Researchers at the National University of Singapore have come up with a beer that contains probiotics. That's right, when you think probiotic, you usually think like the supplements or maybe Jamie Lee Curtis pushing a little bit of yogurt on you. This is a beer that they have designed probiotics to go into. The problem with this was that the hop acids in the beer 
would kill any bacteria that got into it. Well, that's where these researchers got into it and developed a strain of Lactobacillus paracasei. It's known as a, a good bacteria. It was originally cultivated from a human intestine and then changed just enough so it could survive the environment of beer. So this is able to neutralize toxins, fight off viruses, and aid in digestion. Researchers say that the beer does have a little bit of a sharp uh, tart taste to it, but with all the different microbreweries out there and everything, I'm sure somebody has a taste for this beer already. And they are currently working with the university to make this commercially available. They wanna brew it and sell it commercially. Honestly, I'm always looking for something good for my gut. I would try this one out if it comes to a store near me. All right, and before we go, I am going to do a live stream after this show. I'm doing all my uploads now at 5 o'clock. I'm scheduling for the day after I record, and I'm going to do a live stream at 5.30. This is going to give people who watch my show a chance to check it out, and then jump on the live stream with me, and we could chat about what we just learned. Or you can give me your input, and maybe I have my information wrong, maybe you know something I don't, or you'd like to know more about what I just talked about. And this will give us a chance as a community to just talk it out. I hope to see you there. I'll be doing this, like I said, on Friday at 5.30. Be here or be square. And that makes the ending to this weird, because I guess I won't be back tomorrow. I'll be filming, but that'll come out on Monday. All right, I'll figure this all out. But I'll see you when I'm here next time. If I don't see you till Monday, you guys have a nice weekend, and be safe out there.